Howdy folks, welcome to Performance PCs TV. I'm Matt and today we're going to check out everything you need to know about radiators and fans and how they work in your custom loop. First up, we've got radiators. Now, there's a few things you want to check out first. Mainly, their overall size. You're going to mostly see 120 and 140 millimeter base radiators. This one right here will fit a 120 base fan, so that is why be a 120 base radiator. In total, it fits three, making it a 360. Now, this one fits 140 mil fans, and since it would fit two of them, it would be a 280 millimeter radiator. Now you might also notice that these two have different port locations. This one you would call a U-flow radiator as it has both of the ports on one end and the coolant flow will go from one side all the way back around to the other. This one is an X-flow. It has a port on either end so the coolant will actually pass through in an X pattern. Now beyond their overall shape and size obviously there really isn't too much different about an X-Flow versus a, U a U-Flow. An X-Flow you'll find that the port locations might be better off for a top mounted radiator as it'll bring one port on either end of your build. And a U-Flow might be more useful in the front of the case where you need both ports on one end. Cooling performance between the two will be pretty minimal as far as port design goes. Uh, there's been many tests that show X-Flows usually perform within about a degree or two of a U-Flow. Now, as I mentioned, with the U-Flow, both ports are going to be on one end, much like you'll see your AIO liquid cooling loops. And there has been a lot of debate whether or not you should have the ports down or the ports up. And now for custom liquid cooling, it's not quite the same problem you have with AIOs because there is no pump or anything else housed inside this that could go dry. However, when it comes to draining your loop, you'll find that if you can get your ports to be down or near the bottom of your case, it will help your U-Flow radiators drain much better. Whereas if you have the ports up, it can be quite challenging to get all of the liquid out of your loop without having to tip it a whole bunch. Now you might be asking yourself, do I need the 360 or a 280? And overall you'll find both of these would have probably pretty similar cooling performance based on their size. However, you do always want to make note of how the overall design of the radiator is. For example, this 360 fits the fans and it's nearly the same width as your fans whereas this 280 millimeter radiator has quite a bit of channel capacity on either side making it actually quite a bit wider than 280 millimeters. So for anybody shopping for radiators I always recommend to both check their manufacturer's case specifications as well as go and measure if you have the case around. As I mentioned these radiators can be wider than your actual fans meaning the specifications don't always match up with what you're putting in your case. Now there's always been quite a bit of debate on whether or not you should go with a thicker or a thinner radiator and in most scenarios you're going to be better off with the thinner larger surface area radiator than you will with a thinner smaller surface area radiator. However, my main goal whenever I'm setting up the radiators in my loop is to just fit the biggest ones I possibly can and as I mentioned this will usually require measuring and maybe even test fitting some radiators in your case. Now we could even go into detail about your FPI or your fins per inch as well as just the layout and the performance versus other sizes but there's actually a many resources online for this and I'll link a, one of my favorites below that compares all the performance specs of a lot of modern radiators. Now let's take a minute to talk about fans. Not all fans are actually made the same. You might not know this. Obviously, there's several sizes. There's actually many. Uh, we're going to mainly be talking about 120s and 140s here, since that's, like I said, the most common radiator size that you're going to see. Now, beyond their overall size, you're going to notice that some have different blade designs. Here on my left, the CK Vardar has more of the scythe style blade design, where you can see it has more blades and they're skinnier. They're also all kind of scythe shaped 
as I kind of noted the style. Whereas this Corsair fan here has wider, much bigger blades and fewer of them. Now the one on the right here is going to be a much better fan for case airflow and just pushing overall mass amounts of air around. The one on the left here, the EK Vardar, is going to be much better at pushing air through tight spaces, or this would be the static pressure specification. This is actually meant more for a radiator, as that would be one of those tight spaces. Either fan will work on your radiator, it'll bolt right up, it'll push air through. But, like I said, if you go with a static pressure rated fan, you'll typically find that you'll get better performance. Now, I know a lot of you avid PC builders probably know this already, but for any newcomers out there, when you're setting up your fans, you also want to make note of which direction they're facing. The fan hub, or the face of the fan, is going to be the direction it's pulling air in. The back of the fan, or where you can see the back of the motor, is where it's going to be pushing air through. Now there's a bunch of debate on whether or not push or pull is better, as well as push and pull at the same time. What I mean by this is push would be when you mount the fan on the front of your radiator, pushing the air through it. Pull would be mounting the, the fan on the back of the radiator to pull the air through it. Obviously push and pull is both of them combined, and I typically don't recommend going with this. It's going to add a whole bunch of thickness to your radiator and fan combo. And in my opinion, you can typically either go with a thicker radiator or a higher static pressure rated fan in that instance if you want to increase your performance. Now, if you've never actually installed fans on radiators or radiators and cases, this part may be a bit confusing because typically you just use your regular case fan screws to bolt your fans into your case and that always works. When it comes to radiators and fans though, you're gonna have to bolt your fans to your radiator, and sometimes you have a panel in between there somewhere, or some way, shape, or form, you're gonna need to get that radiator mounted in your case. Now in order to do that, you have to keep in mind the thread specifications of your radiator. Now your fan, since it just has through holes, can take a multitude of different screws. However, your radiator has a specific thread that it requires. If you use a different thread, you're going to risk stripping your threads on your radiator. Off the top of my head, I know EK uses 632, whereas Hardware Labs over here uses M4, and you'll often find a bunch of radiators using M3. I believe that's what Alpha Cool uses. So make sure you check your manufacturer's specifications, although your radiator is more likely going to come with the screws you need. And by that, I mean it's going to have two sets of screws, one short set, which is what you'd use in order to bolt your radiator to a case panel, and one longer set. This would be to go through your fans and into the radiator. Now, if you're using something like a, a shroud or a fan grill of some sort in between or on top of your fan and radiator combo, you're gonna probably need some longer screws. The standard length for 632 is an inch and a quarter, and for your metric screws, it's gonna be 30 millimeters. This is pretty easy to figure out as most fans are 25 millimeters thick, so a 30 millimeter screw is required to get to the radiator. Now, if you're using some kind of thin fan or even a thicker fan, like I said before, you're gonna have to look at getting some different length screws. At the end of the day, my personal preference is to typically try to mount up my fans on the back sides or the inside, you could call it, of the radiator. So if you had one in the front of your case, I would have the fans on the inside. And then if you had one on the top, I would have the fans on the bottom side. I prefer the look of fans versus radiator fins. However, I know everybody's choices are different. So perhaps if you prefer the radiator fin array, you can have your fans on the opposite side. This is just my rule of thumb. At the end of the day, there's tons of rads and fans and combinations and information we can gather about them. Like I said, if you can, do your best to do some research on the radiators and fans that you're looking at first to make sure that it's going to fit for your build. But if you're getting stumped by what you're finding, please don't hesitate to shoot me an email over at PPCs. I'm always happy to help you guys pick out what you need for your custom loops. If you guys have anything more to add or some input for this video, please post down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Otherwise, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that like button. If you want to see more, please consider subscribing. But I hope you all have a great day and happy water cooling.